Hey guys, Angus here, bringing you the Airsoft Gun Review today. Today we got the review of the Colt License Full Metal M4A1 Airsoft AEG. This review is brought to you by AirsoftStation.com, and if you're interested in purchasing this gun after you watch this review, there is a link down below in the description to Airsoft Station's website where you can buy this gun for about $170. So sit back and enjoy the review. Now when you first get the gun, this is the box it will come in. Since this gun is licensed through Cybergun, naturally the box is very flashy, decorated with a bunch of various different pictures, and also a couple statistics down on the bottom of the box. One thing I would like to point out for the younger players, the FPS on the box is not correct. That's currently with .12 gram BBs, which you should never use in a gun of this quality. Using the correct gram BBs, .2, this gun shoots around the 350 to 370 feet per second range. When you remove the cardboard box top, this is what you should see. The gun is held in place by various layers of styrofoam and two styrofoam spacers. I don't think it'll get damaged during shipping. Inside the box, you have a short, concise manual about your Colt M4 tells you how to do the usual stuff. A catalog showing off the various different accessories and items that Cybergun sells. A small brown box containing a small type wall charger that produces an output of 250 milliamps, as well as a front sight post adjustment tool. There'll also be an 8.4 volt, 1100 milliamp small type nunchuck battery. A metal 300 round, high capacity M4 style magazine. And of course, your dejamming rod, as well as your Colt licensed M4A1 Airsoft AEG itself. Now jumping right into the review here, when you first take this thing out of the box, if you were me, you're gonna like it. Which is odd, because I generally don't like M4s too much. What really sets this gun apart, for me at least, is its external construction. This gun is built phenomenally well. Externally, it's essentially, it really is full metal. The metal pieces on this gun include your one-piece outer barrel as well as your flash hider with that plastic orange tip on it, your front triangle sight, both your sling mounts front and rear, the actual buffer tube to your LE stock, your carry handle and rear sight as well as your upper and lower receiver. Those are all metal, a couple more minor pieces including your magazine and your gun's delta ring. So essentially, the whole gun here is really made of metal. The only exceptions being your nylon reinforced uh, plastic handguard, motor grip, and actual LE stock. The buffer tube is metal, however the stock itself uh, is constructed of that nylon fiber. So externally, it's built extremely well. A very solid, durable gun. It does have a bit of heft to it. Weighs in around eight pounds out of the box, which typically compared to your normal uh, plastic bodied M4s or the ones with only the metal receivers, those weigh around the five, six pound area, so you get an additional two pounds, being that it does have a lot of metal on here. Durability, this gun is rock solid. Even the plastic pieces on here, they are rock solid as well. There's really no chance of them getting cracked or bent up. They're solid pieces, just like the metal on here. Uh, it's, it's just a phenomenally built gun. I normally don't like M4s, but externally, this gun is set apart because it's just built so well. Internally, you got some good internals in there. I'm really not sure who originally makes this, being that Cybergun is a rebranding company. Airsoft Station told me CYMA, but I'm fairly sure it's JG. Either one of those gearboxes, they are clones, but they do produce a very nice gearbox, and you can go ahead and upgrade it all you want if you really wanted to. So internally, get a sound gearbox. Externally, great build. Another uh, nice touch to the externals here, being that it is licensed through Cybergun, you get the Colt trademarks, which we're going to go ahead and zoom in on those for you now. And here are your lovely trademarks. These are located on the left side of the M4's metal receiver, and that's the only place they are located on the gun. You have the large one located on the magazine well with the Colt logo also stating, you know, Colt, United States Government M4A1 carbine, and also farther back on the gun above the trigger and trigger guard, you do have the Colt Manufacturing Company, Hartford, Connecticut, United States trademark there as well. These trades are painted on. They are rather nice, as you can see, stand out rather well. Uh, the only con being with these is that occasionally those of us who tend to grip our uh, handguard, who tend to grip our uh, magwell instead of our handguard there, our thumbs press against the trademarks and our oils from our skin tend to make them fade and rub off after a while. So they're nice right now, but after a while uh, they may, you know, degrade a little bit, fade away. So despite that little con there, the trades are a nice touch on the M4. Some of us could care less if our receiver says Colt or not, but for those of us who want it on there, they definitely look nice. 
Uh, that's essentially all you need to know about the externals and internals of this gun. Sound, durable weapon, nice trademarks on the left side of the receiver. Let's go on a little bit more in depth as to how you put the battery inside the gun. Now as I stated earlier, the battery your gun will come with is an 8.4 volt. 1100 milliamp nunchuck small type battery. Uh, this is a decent battery, but I would recommend you upgrade it. It'll up your rate of fire a little bit, as in the Chrono, I only saw 5, 50, 600 rounds per minute using this battery, so you may want to up your battory. Being that it's an M4A1, most of the time we do store a battery in the handguard. In order to access your battery compartment, you want to pull back on the gun's metal delta ring, and the bottom half of the handguard will pop off like so. Once that's popped off, flip the gun to the side so you guys can see a slight bit better. Your wires and small type connector will be revealed inside your handguard. Now the handguard is hollow except for the one piece barrel running through it so that you can go ahead and slip your nunchuck or butterfly batteries right in there on the sides, tuck them in and they fit great. That's one of the reasons I do like this gun. You can go ahead and upgrade your battery. It's not limited to just this nunchuck. You can go ahead, put a butterfly in there, and you know, 9.6 butterfly, raise up that rate of fire quite a bit. Battery space in this gun, rather nice. I normally dislike those handguards. I feel they're too cramped, but this one, it does give you quite a few options with your battery, being that it is a larger and hollower handguard than most. Now, in order to seal up your handguard again, simply do the exact opposite of the process. You'd merely attach the front of your handguard like so, pull back on the delta ring, and then slide the bottom of the handguard back in. Of course, your battery would be on there. So with that being said, that's really all I'm going to cover inside at the table. Now we're going to go out in the field, show you guys a little bit of a dramatized situation, showing you off some of the Colt M4A1's features. So let's go ahead, get geared up, and head out to the field. Alright, so we're out in the field. Let's go ahead and start getting into the reviews of some of this gun's features. One thing I do want to point out, kind of a no-brainer before we actually get into the old combat style review scenes. Pretty no-brainer thing here. You got your fire slicer switch. It's located on the left side of the gun's metal receiver. Standard three settings, safe, semi, and full auto. This fire slicer switch is rather tight on the gun, not loose at all. The movements of it are crisp brisk little movement snaps right into place on the selected mode of fire. So a nice fire slider switch and again pretty common sense thing. So let's go ahead get into some of the actual features of this gun. Shoot. Now the included magazine with your Colt licensed M4A1 is your standard M4 high capacity magazine. Now of course as I stated earlier it is made of metal solid mag. I don't think it's going to get damaged when you drop it a short distance as I am crouching right here. Uh, the way it works for the newer players is it holds an extra amount of BBs inside a reservoir, which you would load up via the top of the magazine, and you'd wind those BBs to be fed into the gun via the gear at the bottom. They would feed up to the small hole at the top of the mag. The magazine, I haven't had any feeding issues with. It works like a standard M4 high cap and uh, pretty decent magazine the gun comes with, but as you can see, I'm out of ammo in that one right now. Luckily, this gun is compatible with pretty much all your M4 mags. Now when you're in a tight spot like I am, it really does help to have a gun that is adjustable, make it a little bit shorter when you need a little additional maneuverability. Luckily, this M4A1 does feature the characteristic collapsible LE M4 style stock. Now in order to collapse this stock, it does have six positions from the shortest to the longest shown here. You can simply push in this button, and as you can see, the stock will shorten like so. Or if it was already short, you can extend it. I like having this type of stock on here because A, this particular one is very solid. Again, it's made of the nylon reinforced plastic. Very solid. Doubt it's going to break if you do accidentally smack it into something when it's slinged down and hanging off your side. Also, it's nice to have because like I already stated, you can decrease the size of your gun for more maneuverability and also increase it to give it a little bit more stability on your shoulder. Now naturally you're going to have iron sights on your AEG and of course you got them on this M4A1. They're your standard M4A1 iron sights and you got your front and your rear one. Let's start off with the rear sight. Rear sight is of course built into the carry handle and it's your typical one. You have the two apertures if you wanted to. Not really going to show them to you. You should know what they look like. You have your open hole as well as with a simple flip down you'll reveal your pinhole aperture. These sights are adjustable. In order to adjust the rear sight, you have the dial on the right side of the carry handle to adjust the sight's windage, and also this large dial underneath the rear sight in order to adjust your sight's elevation. 
This carry handle is removable, however, with a couple twists of some screws. You can go ahead and remove it to reveal a standard 20 millimeter rail, like so. Moving onward, your front sight here, it's your typical triangle sight. Uh, just line your rear sight or your optic you have on the rail here up with it. And really, there's not too much, nothing fancy about it. You can go ahead and adjust it with that front sight post adjustment tool, but really that's about it. The iron sights are decent on this gun, but of course, being me, I like to customize my gun. I would go ahead and put an optic on this available 20 millimeter rail. Now, if you want your M4A1 to be accurate, there are a couple things you need to do, being that it is a pretty accurate gun stock. However, of course, you're gonna need to help it out a little bit. Number one, gotta use the correct gram BBs in your magazine. I'd recommend at least .25s, maybe go lower .23s, but more so .25s. And of course, you gotta adjust your hop-up, which isn't too much trouble considering this M4A1 features a pretty nice hop-up unit. Now, in order to access your hop-up unit, simply wanna give the charging handle a pullback. As you can see, your dust cover will flip down and reveal your hop-up unit. Now, in order to adjust your hop up, you simply have to adjust the small black gear right there. If you turn it to the right, that'll increase your hop, and vice versa, turn it to the left to decrease hop. Like I said, I found it to be pretty good. This is a pretty accurate gun with that stock hop up. Maybe do a little bit of upgrades to it as the M4 hop ups are kind of fin finicky, but otherwise, it's a pretty solid hop up. You'll definitely be able to get some kills out there with this gun's stock. All right, and here we're back inside. That only took, what, eight, nine minutes of the review? Probably because I talked too much. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try and get through the final conclusion as quickly as possible. Now, I'm just going to ramble through real quick, say a couple things I didn't like, did like, and, you know, what I overall thought of the gun. Starting off with the bad things. There really isn't too much I didn't care for about this gun. Uh, there are a couple I can think of, so just go over them very quickly. Number one, the Colt trademarks are great. They make the gun look nice, but from what I've experienced in the past with these Cybergun trademarks on the guns, they do tend to fade and rub off after extended periods of use, so kind of sucks because that's the whole point. You bought this Colt license gun so you could have the Colt trades on there. Uh, other things I didn't care for, battery it comes with isn't too great. I would recommend you go ahead and upgrade your batteries. You do have the battery space inside the handguard to maybe house one of those 9.6 butterflies. And really, the last thing I can think of that I could possibly complain about about this very nice M4 is that it's an M4. I don't care for M4s too much. Some people love them. I don't like them too much. I like to be unique. I like to have a weird gun that no one else has and just stand out. Uh, but this one definitely does make an exception. It is common, but it's a nice gun, especially for $170. Pros of this gun, a couple main ones I'm going to list off. I already stated the battery space it does have a decent amount of battery space in that handguard. Of course, the pro is going to be the construction of this gun. It's built great. Full metal construction, solid, durable. The nylon fiber plastic pieces on it, they're solid, they're durable. This is one durable gun. If you're a player who's always in the ground, crawling through the dirt in the games, getting really into it, this could be the M4 for you, especially if you're on a budget looking for a nice M4A1. Colt trademarks, as I already stated, they're nice, but we be wary that they may uh, you know, fade off. And one last thing I'm going to talk about is that it does take M4 mags, which in a world anymore where pretty much most airsoft players either have M4s or AKs, you're going to be compatible with somebody else's magazines on the field. So if you really needed one, he could toss you one and you could use it. So really, Colt's, the Colt licensed M4A1 Airsoft AEG, this is a great buy for $170. I really liked it and I hate M4s. So the construction is really what does it to me. If you're looking for a solid M4A1, it's going to give you a pretty good performance right out of the box. The Colt licensed M4A1 Airsoft AEG at airsoftstation.com could be the gun for you. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Deathcore Airsoft's review of this gun right here. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe.